it's laughable that you would or anyone would describe Davos as protecting liberal democracy. It's equally, Standing up for it. <clears throat> it's, it's, it's equally laughable to use the word dictatorship at Davos and, and aim that at President Trump. In fact, I think that's absurd. But I'm going to step aside from that constructive criticism and instead answer your question. Yep. And, and I'm going to be substantive here. President Trump, if he's the next president, for that matter, I think whoever the next conservative president is going to take on the power of the elites, which I mentioned earlier. But there, the, the thing that I want to drive home here, the very reason that I'm here at Davos, is to explain to many people in this room and who are watching, with all due respect, nothing personal, but that you're part of the problem. Political elites. President of the Heritage Foundation, Kevin Robert, delivers some high school home truth to the World Economic Forum elite about climate change, the CCP, the world organizations are more right to their faces. You are part of the problem. Political elite tells the average people that the reality is X, when in fact reality is Y. When you take a look at how people have developed to speak out at the World Economic Forum, it's actually impressive. You saw Argentina president doing the same thing and a lot of people appreciated him calling out these people. Now this man... But there, the, the thing that I want to drive home here, the very reason that I'm here at Davos, is to explain to many people in this room and who are watching, with all due respect, nothing personal, but that you're part of the problem. Political elites tell the average people on three or four or five issues that the reality is X, when in fact reality is Y. Take immigration. Elites tell us that open borders and even illegal immigration are okay. The average person tells us in the United States that both rob them of the American way of life. They're right. I guess the favorite at the World Economic Forum is climate. Elites tell us that we, we have this existential crisis with so-called climate, so much so that climate alarmism is probably the greatest cause for mental health crisis in the world. The solutions, the average person know, ba based on climate change are far worse and more harmful and cost more human lives, especially in Europe during the time that you need heating than do the problem and the problems themselves. China, the number one adversary, not just to the United States, but to free people on planet Earth. Not only do we at, at Davos not say that, we give the Chinese Communist Party a platform, another supranational organization, the World Health Organization is discussing foisting gender ideology upon the global south. These are practices that are under review, if not being rejected, by countries in Northern Europe. The new president, especially if it's President Trump, will, as you like to say, trust the science. He will understand the basic biological reality of manhood and womanhood, and do you know why? Not because of retribution, not because he's a dictator, but because he has the power of the American people behind him. Not because he's a dictator, but because he has the power of the American people behind him. And it's connected to Senator Portman's excellent point that in addition to needing a vigorous executive, we look forward to having the popular will inform both the House and Senate in 2025 to pass laws on all of those issues and many others, ultimately, Robin, I think President Trump, if in fact he wins a second term, is going to be inspired by the wise words of Javier Millet, who said that he was in power not to guide sheep, but to awaken lions. That's what the average American and the average free person on planet Earth wants out of leaders. Yes, now taking a look at this clip, New York Times CEO get triggered when World Economic Forum moderator say Trump made them successful, moderator Donald Trump used to love calling the New York Times the failing New York Times until at least he realized that he was maybe one of the big contributors to turning the New York Times into the enormous commercial success it became. It became. Laughing, you associated Trump with the success of the New York Times for the Times and the Jonah and all of the major serious news organizations, we are all bigger than anyone's story. I don't know why she got triggered at this point. 
this is the basic truth. Trump used to do this. A lot of people never even knew about them. They made a lot of money. Now she cannot stand this. Take a look at this video. Um, one of the, the topics you mentioned is politics and how that's working. Donald Trump used to love calling the, the New York Times the, the failing New York Times until at least he realized that he was maybe one of the big contributors to turning the New York Times into the enormous commercial <laughs> success that, that it became. Um, Meredith, can, can you tell us what lessons you learned both from that period, but also how you think about the role of a, of a global media organization in this, in this era of yeah. disinformation? Great, great, um, great um, sort of specific and then broad um, question, and thanks for having me here. Um, let me just push on, on one thing you said, which is um, that you associated Trump with the sort of success of the times. I would say um, certainly the giant political story that began in 2016 and continued um, has been of great interest, and that made even more audience come to the New York Times, and I'm sure it made even more people subscribe. But I would say for the Times and the Journal, Emma is also here, and all of the major serious news organizations, um, we are all sort of bigger than any one story or any one topic area, and, you know, we continue to um, have a very strong, very engaged audience and, and grow support. New York Times should not be saying this because I believe they are the highest spreading this kind of information. So if social medias want to do something, they should first target them first. Now going into this video, new Argentina president stunned social media users this week with his speech at the World Economic Forum annual meeting in Switzerland where he called out Western elite for trading freedom for collectivism. I believe this is the only person that spoke out and triggered them. That the Western world is facing a significant threat. It is in danger because those who are supposed to defend the values of the Western world are co-opted by a worldview that inevitably leads to socialism and consequently to poverty and economic deprivation. Unfortunately, in recent decades, motivated by some well-intentioned desires to help others and others by the desire to belong to a privileged caste, when it was announced that this man is going to the World Economic Forum, I saw a lot of people were not satisfied. You know, they were angry. Like, this man just came in. Why? Why are you going to the World Economic Forum? But just from what he did, you know, he was appreciated on social media platforms. We fought a revolution in 1776 to say that for better or worse, we the people, the citizens of this nation, engage in self-governance. We're the ones who decide how we fight climate.